pleasure to introduce Pam Larry. I talk about the change in collective consciousness where somehow the change in awareness in the planet causes incremental changes here and there. But for some, it's like a tuning fork or a bell going off, and they feel, boing, 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 boing. I'm chosen, I just have to do this. And I can tell you from personal experience, when that happens and you start, life is different and it's a blessing. And Pam Larry, her life is different and she is blessing all of us. The person who started the ballot initiative in California, the grandmother from Chico, Pam Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so where to begin? I never quite know what I'm going to say when I stand up in front of a crowd. And I've been running around the state ever since I started this, which was back in January of 2011. I was actually here last year, but I was sitting over there at a table with a little funky banner that I had made up with my little funky logo, labelgmos.org. And um, so anyway, I like to tell the story because it's kind of a different story than most people have heard, unless you've heard this from me because you've heard me speak before. But I'm told, even though I get kind of sick of talking about myself, I'm told that it's helpful to people to hear. So my story is this. I'm a grandma from Chico. I've lived there for 34 years. I was a midwife. I've been an organic farmer. Um, and I've done other kinds of work, businesses and stuff like that, but I've never been an activist before. Um, I started learning about genetically engineered stuff about nine years ago. And at first, I was like a lot of people who you might run into out there. I thought they were just hybrids on steroids. And um, I thought, oh, you know, because I'm a little bit of a, I like science, I like to learn about the world and the workings of the world, and so I was kind of intrigued. And so the more I learned, the more I became concerned. And the primary thing I became concerned about was the fact that we basically, you know, aren't being told what's being sold to us. And so we don't have an opportunity to make a choice. So as I investigated further and further, I watched the films and I read the books and I read a lot of stuff on the internet. Um, I actually got depressed because I started to feel tremendously hopeless and helpless and that there was nothing that we could do, that all I could see was this future coming forward where it was just going to increase and increase because the government and the corporations were inclusion and there was nothing, nothing, nothing that we the people could do. Okay. So last uh, 2010 in the fall was actually pretty catatonic about it. Um, crying a lot, uh, talking about it wherever I would go, whining about it on Facebook, you know. Oh my God, look at what they've done now. You know, got to the point where I would go out in Chico and people would kind of avoid me like how oh, they do with multi-level marketers, you know, that kind of a thing. And um, I, you know, I started crying a lot. I started crying, I, like I cried when the uh, oil spill happened. I could feel the earth bleeding. And I started crying then, and then I started crying about the planet and wondering what the future was. And just really, really, because I've come to find out that if you, you're that obsessed with something <laughs> and you're that depressed, it's kind of a, let me, maybe a little sign that it's, there's something for us to do. So I was in San Francisco in a hotel bedroom one morning about 6.30, about on January 20th. Interesting date, I found out later, because that was the same date that Vilsack was being grilled by the Agricultural Committee over in Washington to make sure that GMOs were deregulated a lot more easily and quickly. But I didn't know that until last summer. Anyway, so I was lying there in bed, kind of, you know, in that hover state that you're kind of like, oh, it's nice. And then all of a sudden, it's like, ah, GMOs, because I was obsessed. You know, it was like, GMOs. Da, da, da. And what can we do? And nobody's helping us. And then it was like, boom, I sat up. And it was like, oh, and it was like, okay. So I realized that it was my job from that day forward until November 6, 2012, to make sure that I did everything I possibly could to get genetically engineered uh, labeling on the ballot. Okay. <laughs> so I went back to Chico. <laughs> And I started researching online. I went to the Secretary of State's website, and I did all sorts of stuff. I got these books about organizing. I started talking to a couple people. I started writing a few letters, and nobody thought it was a good idea. Okay? 
Everyone said, go away, Grandma. You know, <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, which was true. I had no experience. I had no funding. I had no contacts. <laughs> and it's like, OK, I just realized I had to be willing to look like the biggest idiot on the planet and fall flat on my face. Because I started walking around going, we're going to get a ballot initiative to label genetically engineered foods. Okay, this is what we're doing now in California. Okay, so I took six weeks. I made a plan. I uh, decided that I would get uh, go down in Southern California first because that was the largest uh, voter voter base. And I decided I would just get in my car and I would go down there. So I did a website, a nice little website. I knew a young woman who helped me out. And on March 10th, as I call it, I came out on Facebook. Um, I started reaching out to people. Um, I had been a blogger at one point, so I knew about uh, making your name something that people go, oh, this is interesting, so then they come visit you, okay? So uh, people started contacting me on my Facebook page, and I, started, I, I got a phone call from this woman in Southern California named Stacy Hall, who's the other uh, half of this initiative, that, who's very quiet and doesn't talk much. She lets me do all the talking, but she's amazing and has been uh, instrumental in this happening. Uh, and she's the first one that said, uh, I have to, like one little moment that was really weird, when, well, wonderful, was when, when I first started, everyone kept saying, your initiative, your ballot initiative, what about, this is what you should do for your ballot initiative. And she was the first one to say, this, you know, she was just talking, she said, our ballot initiative. And I went, yes, <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> what happened was, I got in my car, picked up Stacy, and we started going to little towns all over Southern California. And we met, you know, found people through Facebook, and I wrote a letter to the Organic Consumer Association, and they published it, and pretty soon people started saying, oh, sure, you can come here, I'll get some people to come here. So we met in coffee shops, and we met in on farm bales of hay, it sounds pretty like, you know, romantic and stuff, but it's true. Uh, we met in libraries and bank community rooms, and, and pretty soon people started to say, I will run my area. I will run my area. And so Southern California started to come together and bless their hearts, these people that had nothing to believe in, but the power of hope and no the knowledge that when we unite, we can create change. Because if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for Stacy. If it wasn't for Mark, if it wasn't for Valerie, if it wasn't for all sorts of people who long ago kind of got that spark and said, okay, this sounds like a good idea that this would not exist. Okay. So midsummer last year, a man named David Bronner contacted me. Wonderful man. Thank you, David. Yeah. Dr. Bronner's magical soaps. I highly recommend you buy them. My daughter was like, whoa, these things, this stuff works really well. Uh, but anyway, he contacted me and said, let's take a look at this. So he brought in some folks. They started doing some surveys and stuff. All the while, I'm still traveling around the state, uh, you know, here, there, and everywhere. And, um, and I couldn't talk about what was going on behind the scenes because they weren't sure they were going to move forward. But we just kept going. We kept, I, uh, how many of you have seen Finding Nemo, uh, that movie? <laughs> Uh, the dory, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. That's what we did. Even though I will tell you that at most points, this ballot initiative looked like it was going to go nowhere. Stacy and I would just go, oh, well, just keep going. So, and we did. And pretty soon, Jeffrey was kind enough to um, help us by uh, putting out letters to the IRT, and people invited us to more meetings, and then more people started showing up. And now we have like 90 groups around the, the state of California. Yeah. Okay. Some of these people have been working at this for over a year. Some of them donate f the equivalent of a full-time job. Okay. And they all do this because they are passionately committed to this issue. They, they blow me away and I often cry when I think about them. Anyway, so we finally finished writing the initiative. I call it a labor of love. And we handed it in, and we uh, got Dr. Mercola, bless his heart. Uh, Steve Ryan and Joseph Mercola are my two of my biggest heroes. They have donated wonderfully to this campaign. Nature's Path came on board and helped out. Strauss has been amazingly helpful. Uh, Eden Foods, Lundberg Rice, Nutiva, all sorts of wonderful folks have come to help us because this is going to take a universe 
universal village to pass, okay? So we handed our we, we got our signatures, we went out there and got on the streets. Most of them uh, were, were gotten in when it was cold and people were standing outside. We had some paid folks, we had our volunteers got close to a third of the signatures, and, which was shocking to everybody, <laughs> and we're like, yeah. And, uh, and we handed in on May 2nd, 971,126 signatures. Yeah. yeah, we did it. We only needed 560,000, and the paid people told us, told us that they used our petition. They, was very, they were very sad when it went away because they used our petition to lure people in to sign all the other ones. Okay. Okay. So people want this. Okay. So then we found out that we qualified on, Ju on June 11th. And about a week and a half ago, we found out that we're now Prop 37. It's pretty exciting. Okay. So instantly, Stacy and I looked up the meaning of 37 <laughs> you know, in numerology. And you know, even though I don't know what I know, think about it. But you know, it was talked about initiatives and new beginnings. It's like, really? It's like really cool. So OK. <laughs> anyway, so getting back to the story. So then now what we have is a lot of, we had a lot of burnout signature gatherers <laughs> who have been taking a little bit of a rest. But I will tell you that as of last Wednesday, I've noted a shift. And I'll tell you why. Folks, they're coming, and they're coming fast. We got word on Saturday that they've already started running ads in Humboldt County, All right? All right, already starting running ads. When you look at what happened in, Ju in June, Prop, 20, uh, Prop 29, is that what it was? Yeah, Prop 29, the tobacco thing, I don't care how you voted for it, that's not the point. The point is they started off with an 80% approval rating, and they lost by 29,655 votes in the state of California. That's less than 1%. California has 247 incorporated cities. That's 67 votes per city that it lost by. That's it. Okay. My first question was, did they have a grassroots movement? And then I found out, no, they did not, because what we're doing is really unusual. It's very unusual to have the initiative process actually be a grassroots thing, but that's what it was originally designed for, was so that the people, if the legislators were not doing what we wanted them to, that we could rise up and come together and get the laws that we want. Okay. So I will share with you that we have a lot of professionals on board now. They didn't quite know what to do with us <laughs> because they've never, they don't have experience with this. You know, it's usually the, a different way that they go about initiatives. But once we gathered signatures, I can tell you they turned their heads around really quickly and took another look at us, seeing that we are a very powerful force. And it is my belief that when we win, it will be because of what we have done on the streets. How we have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How we have united, how we have come together in small ways and large, how we have expanded our webs of connection and community. And because I've run around this state and I've been saying to people, this is a ballot and a statewide ballot initiative, but it's really a community by community ballot initiative. Folks, this is about us taking the first step, the first huge step in legally taking back uh, the beginning of our food sovereignty. There's a lot of stuff going on around food in this country. Check out the King Amendment. Check out their different riders that Monsanto's trying to get in the farm bill. We have got to get off of our butts, away from our computers, whining on Facebook. And I love to whine on Facebook, don't get me wrong, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying, we've got to get out there on the streets and we've got to be talking to people, looking them in the eye, and telling them that no, this is not about uh, hybrids. This is not about selective breeding. We have not been doing this for thousands of years. The FDA does not say that these are safe. They say that they rely on the industry to let them know if it's safe or not, okay? And the industry says it's the FDA's job to determine safety and their job to make a profit. Where does that leave the mother in the grocery aisle? It leaves her with having to have a college degree in how, do you, read, how you read a label. Okay, that's where it leaves. But we've got to get out there on the streets. We've got to tell people that the, the misrepresentations that have already started out there, people ask me when I'm on the road. So, what do you think their arguments are going to be? I say, well, go to their website. It's called Stop the Costly Food Labeling Proposition. And they're calling this the deceptive scheme. 
okay? We're a deceptive scheme, <laughs> whatever. So, <laughs> you know, not labeling your food, so what's in your food isn't deceptive. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I have, but I'm learning that what they do is they take what they are and then they twist it and say that that's what you are. I mean, that's kind of what I've seen, yeah. But it takes me a while. It takes me a while because I'm just, I'm, I, I'm not used to this kind of stuff, but it's kind of like, wait a minute. Okay. So we've got to get out there. We've got to tell them that this was written with farmers and grocers in mind. This was written to, to make it easy for industry to make a transition. This is not extreme. Like one of the things they're saying is this is an extreme labeling law, the most extreme in the world. That is just so far from the truth, I can't even believe it. I, I'm told by the professionals I'm never supposed to say lies. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but it's not, it's not extreme at all. Read the initiative. Ask me questions. If you have any kinds of questions, please do so. Um, anyway, so what can you do today? Okay, in the back, on the right-hand side, is our little table. Okay, we are desperately in need of funds for materials on the ground. We are desperately in need of help getting bumper stickers, getting banners, getting um, flyers that help people know about the initiative, um, pins, uh, I'm actually, I'm really excited. I'm also asking for donations. I'm, 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 not really, I'm, not, I'm not really good at asking for money, but this woman contacted us about doing a car wrap. She wanted to raise money for herself to do a car wrap, and I was finally met her down in California. Car wrap is where the whole car will become like a, a wandering billboard. And so she was going to buy a car, and she was going to, you know, wanted to raise money for gas and this and everything. I'm like talking to her. I'm like, well, you know, I already travel all around the state, you know? So uh, she's like, well, you should do it. I'm like, Wow, maybe I should. So I'm trying to raise money so that Sally, my trusty steed, who's got 305,000 miles on her, by the way, uh, <laughs> uh, can get become a traveling billboard. And I've talked with the campaign, and we'll probably have like, where in the state is Pam to create <laughs> media events. Anyway, got to make it fun. At any rate, so please join us. So go back there, and we are asking groups to come together. Patty is back there. Valerie and Mark are very are all working together to organize your, air, your area. Um, we need people out there not only talking to people, but getting what we're calling personal endorsements, because we're, uh, the campaign just launched today a program called A Million More. Uh, in reference to the signature gathering, we're looking for a million more actions, whether people join our website, which is California Right to Know. You can make a donation there. Uh, you can uh, like us on Facebook. You can join us on Twitter. You can do retweets. You can do all that kind of stuff. You can uh, please sign the personal endorsement forms back there if you have a business. If you are a doctor, if you are a scientist, if you are a teacher, please endorse us and tell us what your area is. Of, uh, if you have a business, please help us by putting us on your website uh, or talking about us on your Facebook pages. This thing has happened because, I mean, one person, you guys, one person on January 20th who was stupid enough to not think about what she was doing and just start, okay? <laughs> okay? Okay. And now, yeah. Yeah. And now we have this. And I realize, this is how slow I am sometimes, I realized just about a month and a half ago that I am the only person in this whole campaign who gets to see what's happening around the state, who gets to sit in rooms like this and look at different people in the eye all over the state and see that in Dobbins, California, people are meeting like this, in Quincy, in San Diego, in Tustin, in Santa Ana, in Santa Monica, in Nevada City, uh, all over the place, in Humboldt, okay? I mean, we've got people everywhere. Merced just started a group. Lamore and Hanford are coming on board. Vacaville, Vallejo, we're filling in the gaps, okay? We're filling them in everywhere, and that's because of us. I don't always share this part about my, uh, about my journey and my epiphany, as, as Jeffrey first called it, but my epiphany included not only labeling genetically engineered foods, but simultaneously it was for us to remember how powerful we are. Okay. Because when I was alone, and I can tell you, I travel all over the state, and I oftentimes see women my age with tears streaming down their face because they too have felt powerless and alone in the midst of all of this. And now they're opening up to hope. 
And it's about that hope when we unite, when we don't believe the lies that we're told that we have no power, that we can't change anything, that we become depressed and we become sad and we don't do anything. So I'm asking you to get off your butts and help us. Help us sign up. Please personally endorse. Please give of your time and your money. And when you think you've given too much of either one, realize you have to give both times 10. Okay. Really, this is it. When Jeffrey was talking about all eyes are on California, I hear that all over the place. States are relying us. I get calls from states. How can we start this? We're watching you. We're hoping that you win so that we can do this here. Will you come help us? I, you know, we're, I, I, the other thing that's so cool about this is like this realization that we're finally waking up in this country and we're joining the rest of the world which has been trying to work on this for decades now. You know, it's like we're becoming part, it's like we're, we're in these little communities, or bigger communities, we're in our communities we're making change, and then that community is going to expand to the state, like Jeffrey was saying, so that we have a change in our state, and I believe that what we do here will affect other states, so then it'll affect our country, and it'll impact the whole world. Folks, you are so important, you have no clue. Please, join us on the streets. Thank you. Thank you.